What's going on guys? Hope everybody is doing good. I should have made this video like a long time ago, but the past couple days I was thinking about it and I'm like, we've I've never talked about this topic. And it's a pretty, pretty important topic. And that topic is how do you correctly, correctly break in your engine? Now, some people may say, you got to listen to the dealer. If they say, you know, 1500 miles, you got to take it easy or some say 3,000 miles, some say 2,000 miles, some say 1,000 miles. But me personally, I'm going to tell you now that I've never ever adhered to those recommendations. And there's a, a few reasons why I never adhered to those recommendations. Number one is I listen to the engine builders and the people that actually manufacture high performance motors or engines or engine builders, engine shops. And throughout the course of my over 30 plus years in riding and also having some really high performance cars and talking to car engine builders, it's pretty much the same across the board as far as how I break an engine in. So there's a lot of people I talk to, you know, they really, as soon as they purchase their motorcycle, and I'm not just talking about Harley Davidson's, I'm talking about any motorcycle for that matter, or a brand new car. And just say, for instance, the manufacturer or your dealer says, you know, take it easy. The first 3000 miles don't bring up the engine RPM past say three or 4,000 RPM. I just never listened to that. And I'm going to get into why. So before we get into this video, I want to see a raise of hands. Let me know down below in the comments who listens to the manufacturer, who listens to their dealer as far as going strictly what they tell you. Because I'll tell you now, probably about 80 to 90% of the people I talk to, they're so worried when they get their first motorcycle, brand new motorcycle, brand new engine, brand new car, and they're like, oh, I can't take it past 3000 RPM. You know, I got to baby the bike. And I'm like, why? Let me know what you guys do or did. Did you, do you guys always listen to the dealer or to the manufacturer? Or do you have experience, other experience in knowing how to really, really properly break in a motor? So I don't know what the exact recommendations are per every dealer, per every manufacturer that goes for motorcycles or cars, but most of them are in the order of say, let's start with say 1500 miles to say 3000 miles. That's kind of in the ballpark of everything in the past that I've experienced or other people telling me, that's kind of what they say, baby, or, you know, kind of take it easy, you know, don't bring the RPMs too high and you got to baby the bike or baby the car up to 3000 miles and then, you know, change the oil and then, you know, your car should be broken in. But I'm telling you, I'm, I'm here to debunk that myth. So every single motorcycle or car that I've ever had, I have never ever did that. And I'm just going to tell you right off the bat that I'm not telling you what to do. You do what you want to do, but I'm just going to tell you kind of some facts, kind of some proof, kind of my experiences and also go over what a lot of high performance engine builders, the people that actually build the parts, build the motors for a lot of high performance applications. I'm going to tell you what they say about how to properly break in your motor, whether it's on a car or on a motorcycle, because there's a lot of myths. Like a lot of people think like it takes 3000 miles to break your engine in. And that's just a big crock of crap. That's just not true. Uh, one is from JE Pistons, uh, obviously big manufacturer uh, of engine parts, engine components. So there's there's a bunch of there's a bunch of things obviously um, that they recommend, bunch of things that actually are bad for your motor. So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to read this off. They say if an engine is allowed to idle in an overly rich condition for as little as 30 minutes, 
This can cause sufficient cylinder wall damage where the wall may exhibit a dull, dark, gray color. If this occurs, the engine will likely require complete disassembly and fresh honing. So this is the number one thing where I'm going to tell you just reading that information that it is so, so important to have either your car or especially your motorcycle properly tuned because believe it or not, they are not efficient when you first get them, believe it or not, as soon as you purchase them from the dealer, especially, let's just talk about motorcycles for the rest of this video. When you purchase your motorcycle, we see it on the dyno. We see the air fuel ratios and they are so whack, it's incredible. They're either too lean or too rich and they are just so inefficient where you could literally purchase your motorcycle straight off the showroom floor and that thing running too rich. And just like that paragraph stated, if your engine, especially when it's brand new, is running too rich for a long duration, and they're saying 30 minutes, it could cause a lot of serious damage to your engine. So the first thing I'm gonna tell you is, if you are, because a lot of these a lot of you guys do stuff to your motorcycles. For instance, it doesn't have to be a big bore kit like my bike. It could be an air cleaner. It could be a slip-on exhaust. It could be a full exhaust, stage one, stage two. Not many things, but you are messing with your air fuel ratio. So you, a lot of you guys purchase like a standard, um, whatever, say, um, you know, Power Vision or Dyno Jet, whatever have you you know, off the shelf unit that you plug into your bike and then you tell them, yeah, I did this and this and this. They put the tune into that unit and then you hook it up to your bike. But I'm telling you guys now, that is not good. If you want your motorcycle to run absolutely perfect with the perfect power and torque and the perfect air and fuel ratio, you need to get it dyno tuned without a doubt. That is basically, those units are basically just like if you have, if you did the work in the garage yourself, you plug it in and you want to get to the shop to get it dyno tuned, that's it. I would strongly, strongly not recommend using one of those just plug-in tuners for your motorcycle for a long period of time because you truly, without looking at the dyno, you have no idea what your air and fuel ratio is. So for instance, if you guys are running too rich, what happens is you're washing away those oils along the cylinder walls, along the piston rings, you're gonna create damage there. And then if you're running too lean, that means you're gonna be running way too hot. The leaner the air fuel ratio is, the hotter it is. So then, that's what happens if you get too much bluing in the pipe or just running too hot. If your bike runs too hot, especially on our beautiful machines, Harley Davidson's and, and other motorcycle engines that are only air cooled. If they're running too lean, they're going to run way too hot. So if you get it properly dyno tuned, you're going to know because you're going to see that dyno sheet. You're going to know that is at the optimum, optimum air fuel ratio. So I'm telling you guys, get your bike dyno tuned. So now this is where it gets interesting. Braking oil should also be used for initial engine running and then changed along with the filter and replaced with the engine oil you intend to run. On a street engine, this would mean less than 100 miles. Changing braking oil removes the impurities that will be present in oil from the braking period. Synthetics sometimes can do too good a job of, of reducing friction so that the rings cannot see properly. So that's another thing is in the initial break-in period, you do not, do not want to use synthetic fluid in your motor to break it in because that doesn't give it enough friction for it to properly break in. So now when, when they talk about break-in, so you guys know, it doesn't mean that the bearings are actually seating or you know stuff has to mend together and stuff like that. That is not what break-in period means. The, there's only one thing that needs to happen when you break in your motor. That is one thing. And that is you need to seat 
your piston rings up against the cylinder walls properly so you have the best seal possible. That's it. That's all the break-in is. Only one thing. That's it. So also what happens when you use synthetic fluids and you have too much lubrication, just like they said, it works too good. With the peaks and valleys filled in, they're talking about the cylinder walls when they're new. When they're new, all they do is hone the cylinder and it has like a cross hatch in them. It's actually not smooth. And then what you're trying to do is seat that ring perfectly up against as it's moving down. So this way you have a perfect seal. What happens is if you use synthetic fluid, the peaks and valleys get filled in. The glaze creates an extremely smooth surface, making oil control very difficult. The net result is excessive oil usage. Sometimes this glaze will exhibit excessive oil consumption with or without the presence of the classic blue oil smoke. A quick way to evaluate above, ab above normal oil usage is to pull the spark plugs and look for oil on the threads of the spark plugs. That means it's actually pushing oil past the rings into the cylinder. This is a common warning sign of a loss of oil control. So here we go. This is where it gets interesting. And again, I'm going to explain to you. When we talk or when everybody talks about breaking your engine in, breaking your engine in correctly, the only thing that that means has nothing to do with anything other than seating the brand new rings up against the cylinder walls. So the ideal combination is to tune the engine so that it starts on the first or second revolution. For carbureted engines, this means pre-filling the fuel bowls and accurately setting the initial timing. As soon as the engine starts, immediately bring it up to above idle speed. According to JE's senior technical account manager, you don't want to break in an engine at idle. You want to keep the RPM above 1500 and vary the speed continuously for about 20 minutes. After bringing the engine up to normalized coolant and oil temperature, put the engine under load. The cylinder pressure from 50 to 75% and eventually to 100% load will place additional pressure on the backside of the rings, which will quickly establish the proper wear pattern for seating. With today's rings, especially molly phased versions, this can be achieved in a very short period of time and certainly, and certainly within 20 to 30 miles of street driving. It does not take 1500 miles to break in a motor. I have never, ever, ever taken a brand new motorcycle and literally waited until 1,500, 2,000, 3,000 miles to crank the throttle all the way down. In WOT dyno testing, the rings are seated by the end of the first few runs. Did you hear that? Listen to that. Some people, now listen to this. This is what I talked to uh, uh, just a few minutes ago. Some people think we are trying to bed in the bearings or the crankshaft, and that's not the case. If you end up with metal to metal contact between the bearings and crankshaft journals, you're going to cause damage. Once that contact occurs, no amount of gentle running in is going to fix that. So if the engine is built correctly, there is nothing else to do. You're not bedding in bearings. You're not bedding in the crankshaft. That's not what break-in is. What is actually being done during engine break-in is fairly simple. It's the controlled bedding or wearing in of the new piston rings on the hone of the cylinder walls. We are trying to bed those rings so they achieve a correct seal against the cylinder walls. And we have a relatively narrow window in which to do this. Once we achieve that seal, we end up with an engine that creates good power, has low blow by, and has low oil consumption. So like if you do not actually run the engine in properly, like the first 50 miles, you're done. You're done. You could literally possibly glaze the walls. You could possibly break in the motor the incorrect way. So always remember that. If what I do, I'm gonna tell you exactly like what I do as, as, as soon as I get, and I'll give you a couple more examples of this. As soon as I get a motorcycle, just say like Mad Max, 
As soon as I got Mad Max, honestly, I rode the bike almost kind of like what this gentleman, this engineer was saying. I rode the bike for about 50 miles, you know, gave it some nice throttle, you know, you don't want to go too hard on downshifting, on excessive engine braking. But what you want to do is like, I like to get on the highway and kind of like from 2000, say to 5000, I like to slowly roll on the throttle and then let go. Slowly roll on the throttle and let go. And I'll bring it up to five, five and a half thousand RPM. So those pressures build up. So I get a full seal, a full seat of those rings onto the piston walls. So this way, what they actually do is remove that cross hatching and start getting the cylinder walls bedded in, start getting those rings bedded into those cylinder walls. Just like this engineer said, after about a hundred miles, you're done. You're not doing nothing. Like it's not going to take you a thousand miles to break in your motor, 3000 miles to break in the motor. That's why like I look at these people sometimes and I'm like, Oh, you know, yeah, I got 2,500 miles on it. I still got to baby it. I'm like, that's how you probably already incorrectly broke it in your motor. And then what happens is after you broke it in and maybe that person doesn't ride their bike hard, but say he does after that, then you're looking for problems because the engine was never broken in properly. Or say he sold the motorcycle to somebody else and he's a much harder rider. And then he has problems with the motorcycle because it all stems from not breaking the motor in properly. You have to put load on the motor in order to bed those rings on the cylinder walls properly. You don't want to be riding around 1500, 2000 RPM for a thousand miles. If you did that, I hate to say it, you probably broke your motor in incorrectly. And then a lot of people ask like, you know, I know a lot of people that don't ride hard. They got two, 3000 miles on their bike and they're like pushing smoke. Or then they ask, why is my engine using a lot of oil? Because it's not broken in correctly. So for instance, like I was saying before, when I bought Mad Max, get onto the highway, three miles on the bike, and I take it for a nice 100, 150 mile ride. And what I'll do is I'll crank the throttle, I'll bring it up to 5,000 RPM, and then let it off slowly. Again, crank the throttle, bring it up to five, five and a half thousand RPM. You don't want to go all the way to red line, you know, in that initial, say, 100 miles, but you want to put a good substantial load on the motor, just like they said, 50 to 75 percent and then 100 percent. And again, like they said, it should be done within 30 miles, 30 miles. And these are engine builders and they know they tear down motors. They know how long it takes to break a motor in. And then pretty much like, for instance, like even on Matt, like say on Mad Max or any one of the like, I don't know, over 50, 60 motorcycles I've had, I've never ever waited two, 3000 miles to bring the engine past 2000 RPM. That is like so, so bad for the motor because you never put the proper load on the motor for the rings to seat. So then after like a hundred miles of doing, you know, full throttle, bring it up to five, let it back down, bring it up to five, let it back down. The motor's good to go. It is good to go. And then I'll give you an instance, like even a lot of times engine builders say whether, you know, it was Dave or get lowered or any other engine builder that I talk to, regardless whether it's Harley Davidson or a metric motorcycle speed shop where they do a lot of engine work. When they build a brand new motor, just like when Get Lowered built this motor, they put it through a couple heat cycles on the dyno. And the same thing, it's a brand new 128. So what they do, put it on a dyno, bring it up, power, let it down, bring it up, power, five, five and a half, almost 100% throttle, and down. And they do that repeatedly for say 20 to 30 minutes, bring that operating temperature up, and then within that 30 minutes, that engine is good to go. And then what do they do? It is on the dyno getting tuned at literally full max RPM, hitting the rev limiter for like an hour, 
for like an hour because they have to hit rev limiter to actually dyno your motorcycle, to dyno the engine properly. Are they waiting a thousand, two thousand miles, three thousand miles? I'm sorry, but they're not because they know, they know that within 30 minutes to an hour, within 30 miles to 50 miles, if done properly, that engine is broken in the proper way and there's nothing else that you're going to do to it that is going to break in that motor after that period. We're talking 30 minutes times say 4,000, 5,000 revolutions per minute. So we're talking about that piston in the cylinder actually went up and down 150,000 times. Do you understand? 5,000 RPM, 5,000 revolutions per minute times say 30 minutes you're on the highway, 150,000 times that piston went up and down in that cylinder. You're telling me that that cylinder, that ring, and that ring isn't seated up against the side of the cylinder wall? Of course it is, of course it is. You guys tell me, because this has been, a, you know, a topic I hear, I hear it all the time, you know, I got a baby to bike until a thousand miles, until 1500, until 3000. I'm like looking at them, I'm like, come on, man. I took Mad Max from Get Lowered, they built the motor, they put it through a couple heat cycles, a proper break-in, and then it goes straight on the dyno for hours hitting rev limiter at 6,500 RPMs. That's it. I take the bike from Get Lowered, I'm freaking romping on the bike. I got about 10,000, I think nine, 10,000 miles on this build. It is running perfectly, but that's just the truth of the matter. That is what braking period is. That is what breaking in a motor is. And for those guys that still listen to the baby the bike two to 3,000 mile thing, I would do your research, look into it, make sure you are properly, properly breaking your motor in so this way you guys don't have issues um, in the future. They also do recommend, um, a lot of engine builders also do recommend using a mineral-based oil for the break-in uh, period. A lot of actually, a lot of mot motorcycle manufacturers, I don't know if Harley does it, but a lot of motorcycle manufacturers actually come straight from the factory with a mineral break-in oil already in, and then they recommend the first oil change to obviously remove that mineral oil and then put some fresh oil that they recommend you using for the future. So um, that is actually the proper fluid that you should be using because it's a, uh, um, you know, has more minerals in it and it, uh, it just makes those rings seat and make a proper seal up against the cylinder walls better. That's how I feel about the break-in period mumbo jumbo. 30 miles, 50 miles, do, do it the proper way, put it under load, man, let her rip. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate every single one of you, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.